bitch, yeah, the twins, they be checking in. Stacking up green is the scene that you're stepping in. Winning is a trend, and we stay making dollars. Nerd talk with the sports bet scholars. Yeah. We are live. Welcome back to another edition of the Euro Sports Bet Show. My name is Sir Close I'm joined here as always by my brother Tim. And today, uh, not a huge card. Uh, we get two games in the NHL and we get, I think, eight in the NBA. Uh, so not too much to go over for today. But before we get into today's games, before we get into today's slate, we'll take a look back at what happened yesterday. One went right, one went wrong in the wall of sports betting. And it looked like it was going to be a miserable day because I started off 0-2. Uh, the Islanders had multiple leads and blew them both. And then um, and then uh, New Jersey lost 3-1. So I went 0-2 to start the day. And it was going into the third period. Uh, and I had the Blackhawks team total over three and a half, the full game over five and a half. It was two, one sharks heading into the third period. I'm like, great. I'm going to probably reverse sweep this game. And then bam, 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 three goals. in about, I think they said a minute and a half for the Blackhawks and the over was a winner. The team total over was a winner. So that turned around. And then of course, how can you fade the Boston Celtics on St. Patrick's day? They kicked the ever living crap out of the Washington wizards. First half minus six and a half was a winner. Full game minus 11 was a winner. Team total over 119 and a half was a winner. You could have played the trifecta. It would have been a winner. They won the first quarter by 18, won the second quarter by 10, and never looked back in that game. So easy triple up winner on the Boston Celtics. They're back in action today as 15-point home favorites against the Detroit Pistons. We'll get into that in a little bit. A little bit. But um, overall, what looked like it was going to be a ter- what was a terrible start uh, an 0-2 start finished uh, with a 5-0 and end of the night, uh, up 1.80 units for me. So, overall, a nice profitable day um, uh, yesterday. Uh, it, it was it was not on the site. Uh, and it's because of college basketball, um, which it happens. Uh, NBA also wasn't that good. Uh, Yale minus 8. Um, unfortunately, they uh, they only win by one on a buzzer beater. Um, so, they, they made it in. Uh, I, I, I was telling everybody that uh, Yale wins the Ivy League, and they won the Ivy League. Um, and, now is, and now is the time with Yale to get away from them uh, in that first round because they're going to get the crap being out of them against Auburn. They should, yeah. I uh, laid the 12 and a half with Auburn. So. Yeah. Bucks minus two was a winner. Duquesne wins the A-10, which was really nice to see. And then Florida uh, did not get it done, unfortunately. Temple did not get it done. Uh, Denver loses outright, and the under – it ended up going into overtime. Uh, the under loss when, uh, when I think Brooklyn tied it up to go into overtime. So that kind of sucked, um, but end up being a down 3.09 unit day. It is what it is. We move on. Sure. Head over to the chat, and then we'll get into hockey. Yes. Um Cashed two eight-game parlays yesterday. Kid you not. Hell yeah. Hmm. Good deal. Took a shot last night. Hawks money line at plus 360 at $300 for 1080 Excellent way to end Sunday. There you go. Uh, good stuff. Real deal. What up, fellas? Let's cash. Let's do it, LJ. Um, killed it last night. Big bags, but already over. Uh, scored at 0.3 seconds. Cashed your uh, goal prop for... Uh, for puck line games. There you go. Hell yeah. All the favorites covered the one and a half in hockey yesterday. It was gross. It was. Yikes. Um, so that means dogs today. Yeah. yeah, the only thing is that the dogs today are pick them. Yeah, I, I, I already bet both hockey games. Plus 15. I, I, bet, I bet both hockey games. You already bet um, both hockey games. Yeah, today's kind of ugly. It's all NBA for me, no NHL. I'm good. Uh, morning ESP. What's up, Fernando? Morning EQ. Nets are now 0-4 in overtime games. That's good to know. If Nets going to overtime, fade them. Uh, the Ducks 
outshot the Blues last night and lost. That's tough. Shout out to ESB. Hofer was good yesterday. People were talking bad about Hofer yesterday. Uh, the only stressful game was Vegas puck line. Uh, I know you had uh, the Devils, but it was, nice to see, it was nice to see Vegas lose. I'm uh, sorry, um, the, the Devils lose. Um, Devils are out. I don't know. Uh, go Lobos. Morning, boys. Let's make some money. Let's do it. Uh, let's head to the hockey card today, and we'll start off with this game, Nick. Yeah, we have the Calgary Flames hosting the Washington Capitals. Uh, the Flames minus 135 favorites with a total of um, six in this game here. Let's – where's my line history? Did I delete the page that has a line history? I must have. That's good. Let's see my action network. I don't see the page I use for line history unless I moved it somewhere. I did not. All right. So let me get that that uh odds page up real quick. So sorry about the delay. I did not. Unbelievable. Have... I know I'm the worst. Here we go. On DraftKings, this line opened up at a 138 at 148. It's down to a 135. So we've had a move towards Washington in this game. Line opened up at a six at even money. It's now a six at minus 115. Uh, in this game, taking a look at the cash flow here between um, between Calgary and Washington, uh, we have 42% of the tickets, 97% of the cash is on the Flames, 3,000 tickets in, and then 67% of the tickets are on the under in this game as well. Now, the tricky part in this game here is how much you want to put into the goaltending of this matchup here because... Before he was called back up, Dustin Wolf was not very good. And the last two games, he's been pretty good. They won back to back games with Wolf and Net, 4 1 over Vegas, 5 2 over Montreal. And Montreal put up a decent amount of expected goals last game. Uh, they put up 3.44. He gave up two goals. So overall, he looked better in that game there. I kind of want Calgary at this number at 135. Uh, this is, I believe, the last game of a West Coast road trip for the Washington Capitals, I believe. Uh, yeah, they had home to play Toronto. Yeah, they had home to play Toronto, Carolina, Winnipeg, Detroit at home. Uh, the next four games. And this is the last game of a semi-successful road trip. They they've beaten Seattle, Vancouver, two to one and two to one the last two games. And I know it's not been very profitable betting against the Washington Capitals this year, but I think I'm going to. Uh, I think I'm going to be. Able, I'm thinking I'm going to be doing that today. I'm um, looking at the the Calgary Flames in this spot here at the dollar thirty five price tag. I took their puck line plus one seventy. Um, I, I I'm I'm gonna ride with that instead. I know um, Washington is I, this is just a rough spot for them, uh, and especially a look ahead spot that they get to go and play um, a division. No, not a division rival. Sorry, because um, Toronto's in the Atlantic. My bad. But a, a rival nonetheless in the Toronto Maple Leafs. Um, I think it's a look at spot, and it's a just a, a kind of a let's get this road trip over with and head back home. Uh, I will say there's probably a little bit of motivation for Washington, uh, just because I think if they win today, they're they would be in a playoff spot, which is yep. crazy to think of. I never thought I would say that. This this Washington team won't just lay down and die already. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, cur- currently they're a, a point back of both. Uh, of just Detroit because um, Tampa Bay keeps winning. But, hey, all of a sudden they can get into a playoff spot. But uh, I don't think they do. Give me Calgary puck line here. Yeah, I'm going to move on Calgary here in this spot. Over on Bet MGM. there's a minus 135. That is where I'm going to be locking in the Flames is the minus 135 there because it's minus 135 basically everywhere else and even 138 on FanDuel. So I think this line will go up throughout the day. Um, I'm I'm going to be on them as well. There you go. Circle of trust. I've been getting hung over my ankles by the books. Uh oh, that's not good. Probably the Flames. Anyone going to bet these two MLB games this week in Seoul? I'm not yes. sure if I am or not. Yeah, of course Nick is. He's going to be on the the uh, Padres both games. Yep. Hard pass to uh, two teams that you can't trust, but I can't trust the Capitals even more. I don't know. The Capitals have been pretty good. So, yes, sir. Laker team total over. 
Um, against the Hawks? Yeah, sure, why not? Um, what's up, Nicholas Handy? Uh, the Capitals have a minus 30 goal differential, and the Flames have minus four. The Flames are slightly uh, are the better team slightly. Under six and a half. Could be a, an interesting play in that uh that game. Well, I don't know if unders are necessarily interesting, but uh, last night was great in hockey. Seems like everyone cooked the books yesterday. Um, if you laid a bunch of puck lines, yeah. Yeah, yeah if you laid a bunch of puck lines and chalk, then yeah, I did not. Uh, Calgary wins for Buffalo tonight. I hope so. Uh, can't get out of uh, can't get out of the three out of four skid may reduce the two to, or or don't you parlays. Let's head to the other game, Nick. Yeah, we have the Buffalo Sabres and the Seattle Kraken in this one here. Uh, we have the Kraken as minus one twenty favorites with a total of uh, five and a half in this game. Let's take a look at the line history here on DraftKings. This line opened up. Uh, with the crack in his minus 130 favorites, it's down to a 118. So we've had a move towards the Sabres in this spot here. Line opened up at a 6. It's down to a 5.5 at minus 112. Uh, we have 34% of the tickets, 51% of the cash on the Sabres. So the, the bigger bet's coming in on Buffalo here in this game here. Um, kind of a tricky matchup here, and this is one where I want to see who's confirmed net because – I have a feeling we might see Devin Levi in between the pipes for this game. And if that's the case, give me the Kraken. Um, I don't want Devin Levi in his first game back in the NHL in a very long time. That's just not something I want. For me, it's Kraken or nothing. Um, Uko Pekalukanen will keep me off the Kraken. Devin Levi will put me on the Kraken type of situation here for me. I'm not 100% sure how I'm approaching this game yet. Or if I'm betting this game yet, but if I am, that's the way I would do it. The Buffalo Sabres have never beaten the Seattle Kraken in their long existence, in the Kraken's long existence. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I, that's that's always the recent history is telling telling you Seattle. Um, I I mean I, I threw a couple bucks at Buffalo because I'm I I need to have a reason to stay up and watch the game tonight because um, I mean I, I hey. I have off tomorrow, Nick, so I don't have to wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning. So I'm actually going to be able to sit down and watch the Sabres game tonight at 10 o'clock. But um, I, I have a bad feeling I'm going to be going to bed early. Uh, <laughs> but um, I'll, I'll take the Sabres. Let's let's, let's keep running because, yes, they lost last game to, to Detroit. But all of a sudden, a win again today, and they're only three points back again. So um, time to get my hopes up again. Let's do this. Totally. Um, Sabres money line. The journey continues. By the way, um, and, and I know Real Deal will probably see it. yesterday. In terms of from the Buffalo Sabres perspective, was a beautiful day with Detroit. Sorry, Nick. The Islanders and the and the Devils all losing. That helps out. I know you said the Devils are already out of it, but I want to make sure the Devils stay below us. They're only one point below us, so um, uh, just. I, I still need them to lose games. So do the parlays. No, I'm seeing a five and a half with the Sabres over. Uh, over if it's Levi, if it's UPL, then I would probably lean towards the other Sabres. There you go. Levi called up to help the upcoming with the upcoming back to back. Oh, they play it back to back. Oh, shit. They're in Vancouver tomorrow and they're plus 160 dogs. Oh, boy. All right, Nick. Who would you rather? Uh, would they rather have Devin Levi or UPL against the the Canucks or Seattle? I'm thinking they rather. I think UPL plays tomorrow. But we'll see. Yeah. If you're gonna already bet Buffalo this week, do it tonight. If you're gonna bet Buffalo this week, do it tonight. Levi has been fire in the AHL. Levi is fine. Vancouver, Edmonton, Calgary this weekend. Uh, this week for the Sabers. Uh, this is the first of the four road games. It is not the first of the four road games because they played in Detroit. Uh, you'll kick me in the teeth tonight. So let's go, boys. Let's get it. I uh, can't watch uh, what I bet unless I have I have a big lead. True. I faded those teams in cash. There you go. Ha-ha. Uh, the one who killed my parlay was the Islanders plus one and a half yesterday. Rangers scorched them. Yep. Let's cash some B- – 
Let's do it. Let's do it, dude. Let's head to the NBA, which I'll be honest, I have one play today. Yeah, uh, we have uh, – we're gonna kicking on off here with the Cleveland Cavaliers taking on the Indiana Pacers. I'm assuming there's some type of injuries here because I remember when I was punching in my numbers for this game, there's a pretty decent discrepancy between – what my number said it should be, and what the number say, uh, what the line is. Line opened up at a four. It's up to a six and a half now. So we've had a two and a half point line movement towards the Indiana Pacers. I'm assuming injuries in this game. Line opened up at a 227. It's down to a 226. So we've had a move towards the under. We've had a move towards the Pacers in this game here. Let's take a look at the line history in this one here, where uh, I have, or I see 47% of the tickets, 86% of the cash is on the Pacers. The line's moving heavily towards them. And then 50-50 split on the total here in this spot. Uh, this is one of those games where the market will do its job and keep me off this game because I have this game capped way lower, but I'm assuming there's injuries here because I have this game around a two. Uh, uh, I have Indiana as around a two-point favorite in this game. I'm assuming injuries are plaguing the Cavaliers again. And um, there, there's some players out. Mitchell and Struess both out. There, uh, both of them projected to come back on the 20th. So, um, for me, it's a lean towards the Pacers, but I'm not laying seven points on them. Uh, Cleveland can still be a scrappy team even without uh, Mitchell. So, I still like this Cleveland team, but uh, I'm not, I'm not gonna be laying it with them right now. So, um, this one's a stay away spot for me at the moment. Goodbye, Nick. Have a good day. Um, no bullets. Till OT, check 66 hours. Tailing the Sabres. Good luck to you. Let's keep on rolling, and we get this beautiful game up next. Um, it's the Boston Celtics and the Detroit Pistons. The Celtics are 15-point favorites with a total of 223. And we get a battle of a team that has already been mathematically eliminated from the playoffs versus uh, the only team who have clinched a spot so far. Um it should be a ugly game. Am I laying 15 points on the Celtics? No. Am I grabbing points with the Pistons? No. Touching a total? No. Uh, is this one gross? Yes. I'm not interested. Fair enough. Uh, this Boston Celtics team made me a lot of money yesterday. Um, or they, they, I tripled up on them yesterday. This line opened up at a 15. It's still a 15. It did get up to a 16 at one point, 16 and a half at one point. Um, line opened up at a 223 and a half, down to a 223. So we've had a half point line movement towards the under. We've had no line movement on the side. We have 22% of the tickets and 54% of the cash is on the Pistons. So the sharp money coming in on the Pistons here in this game line is not moving. It actually moved up to a 16, 16 and a half before it, it, it moved back, it had to move back down there. And then 86% of the tickets are on the over in this game as well. And for me, I have this game priced at an 18 and a half, 19 range. Um, and I get it. This is the Celtics on a back to back. So the question is, do you, do we think they blow them out? I'm leaning towards. Yeah. Uh, this Celtics team is just one, uh, just been a team that maybe it's just, I mean, my numbers love them. Needless to say that uh, they have them pretty clear and above everybody else when it comes to, uh, comes to, um, yeah, yeah. Power rankings. The last their last five games, they have won by 26, 15, 16, 22, and 10. They've covered in all five games. Uh, and they've just looked really, really strong. I would like to move on the Celtics here as 15 point favorites at home. Um, they are just a covering machine right now, and they've been really solid for me as well in the first half. This is a team I've been betting first half full full games with, this Boston Celtics team. And I think we can do that again today. And I get it. They're big favorites in this spot. And maybe with the back-to-back -back with them, maybe it's the second half of a uh, – maybe it's the – the uh, maybe it's the – what do you call it? Uh, the later in the game is where they start to struggle a little bit. So that's why I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to split this up between the first half and the full game. Um, and I'm going to shop around for this. I'm seeing FanDuel giving me an 8.5 minus 120 for the first half, and I see uh, Fanatics giving me a 15 for the full game. I'm going to move on the first half full game split here with the Boston Celtics. You have fun with that. I will. Um, smart man, Justin. Celtics and Pacers parlay. 
if you don't mind juice. Cavs 11 and 2 to the under on the road. Uh, Pacers 7 and 3 last 10. So uh, LJ likes the under. Say word. I was on the Celtics yesterday. Yeah, yep. I, I, I don't lay points, so I was not. Uh, Boston first half again. LJ's riding the Boston Celtics first half. Roto Wire says Levi and Grubauer expected uh, for Sabres versus Kraken. Hmm. First quarter, first half. And yo, yo, yo. What's up, Mr. Crypto Knight? Uh, let's head to this game, Nick. Yep. Um, sorry, I was placing my bets here. Um, Miami Heat at the Philadelphia 76ers in this game. Here are the Sixers minus two and a half. Total of 209 in this game. Let's take a look at the line history in this one here, where uh, on DraftKings this opened up with Philly is five point favorites. It's down to a two and a half. So we've had a two and a half point line movement towards the Miami Heat in this game. Line opened up at a 215 and a half. It's down to a 209. So we've had a line movement down uh, on the total. We've had a line movement towards the Miami Heat. 42% of the tickets and 93% of the cash. 5,700 tickets in. We'll do that on the Heat here. And then 91% of the tickets are on the under. The line has come plummeting down towards the under there. So uh, we've had, we've had. I mean, the 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 markets are agreeing with the way the line's moving here. Uh, I have this game projected at, where is this? I have my I have Philly as a two and a half point favorite. So I think this line moves correct because the line shouldn't have been a five with Philly. It should have been a two and a half here. So I think this line move is correct. I would lean probably over the total with this line uh, plummeting, uh, but I'm just going to pass on this game. Uh, the problem with this game is that there's so many GTDs right now, um, and there's way too many injuries and all that stuff. It's just a hectic line right now that it's dropped from five to two and a half. For me, it's a lean towards the heat, but obviously with Jimmy Butler as a game-time decision and – uh, Kevin Love is a game time decision. Nikola Jovic has a game time decision. Um, it's just a weird spot for both. I'm not touching anything in this game until I know who's playing. So, uh, a pass, but I do lean towards the heat in this one, Nick. Fair enough. I may have to agree. Celtics didn't even see who they're playing. Capitals. They're like the Capitals today. I don't. Hopefully Celtics didn't party too hard for St. Patrick's Day. Oh, my God, the Pistonians. Everyone smashing North, uh, South Carolina to beat Oregon? No, Oregon to the Sweet oh. 16. Oregon, baby. Oregon. I've ar- I, I, uh, all right, so real quick. Uh, I've already bet seven teams, two of them in the first four, five of them in the first round. I've already taken Wagner plus the points and money line and Colorado for the first four. I'm probably going to add UVA when it hits a three. I'm on Sparty Party at dollar twenty. I took even money on Oregon, BYU at minus seven and a half, St. Mary's minus four and a half, Auburn at twelve and a half. Yep. Um, those are the ones I've taken so far. Which one? Hold on. What was the middle one? BYU. Yeah, I didn't. That was the one I didn't like. Uh, that's against Duquesne. Yes, I like Duquesne. All right, Heat. 26 and 9 to the under on the road. Sixers 7 and 3 there to the under the last time. So under in that game. The kid, um the twins have been hating on South Carolina all year. South Carolina doesn't have good numbers. They're getting lucky in games, and it's going to catch up to them eventually. No, I don't think South Carolina is a good team. No. And I think Oregon is. Let's keep rolling, Nick. Yeah. Chicago Bulls are eight-point favorites, total of 214 in this matchup here. Let's take a look at the line history here in this game, where it opened up with the Bulls sitting at minus 7.5. We're up to an 8 now, so the line's moved towards the Bulls in this game. Line opened up at a 214.5. It's uh, down to a 213.5 now, so we've had a move towards the under, and we've had a move towards the Bulls here in this spot. I have this game priced at a seven and a half. I think this line's kind of correct, uh, so it's a it's a pass for me here. Um, yeah, I, I obviously I'm not laying. Was it eight points on the road? I'm oh, sorry, at home with with the Bulls, but it's against Portland, who's already been eliminated from the playoffs. Um, 
This is a uh, Bulls team that they're kind of just stuck in that nine spot. They're not moving anywhere. They're four games, four, uh, three and a half games, behind, or four and a half games behind Philly, which Philly's in the eight seed now. Beautiful. And then uh, they're two and a half games ahead of Atlanta. I don't really see that either of them going anywhere. So um, for me, this is this is a pass. I'm not laying that many points on the Bulls, and I'm not touching the Blazers right now. Fair enough. We'll end up getting into the one game I do like next. Um, Carolina wins it all. Yes. No. Uh, all those losses y'all took on South Carolina games, plus 200 and plus 180 money lines, have clouded their judgment. Respectfully. No, I just don't think they're all that good. Let's jump into this one, Nick. Yeah, uh, where we have the Utah Jazz and the Minnesota Timberwolves in this game. Here we have the T-Wolves, six-and-a-half-point road favorites, total of uh, 223 in this game. Let's take a look at the line history in this spot, which opened up with Utah as seven-point – or uh, as – Minnesota was as seven point favorites. Now they're down to a six. We're starting to see some sixes pop up here. Taking a look at the cash flow 40% of the tickets, 95% of the cash is on the T Wolves in this game. Uh, 6,300 tickets in, and the line's dropping towards the Jazz. I have this game projected at a five, uh, a five and a half, six range. So I think this line is correct. Um, so this is an, this is not, not a play for me. Uh, this one's a simple pass. I think I have a uh, – I think I like a game and a couple games here, but this is not one of them. I'm expecting heavy regression from the Minnesota Timberwolves. Um, and it's – and I th- I don't know if they're necessarily going to lose outright, but we've already seen this line move. It went from 7.5 to 6.5. Um, I'm on the Jazz. It's my only play in the NBA today. Um, I just think it's a, a, a good spot for them. You get these two teams, and and keep in mind, these two teams just played in Utah, and Minnesota won by 19. So, of course, they went, opened it up at 7.5 after a 19-point game, and they dropped it to 6.5, 6. Something tells me Utah wins this game outright, but I will be taking the points. I got them plus 6.5 for the Utah Yaz tonight, Nick. Fair enough. Uh... I worked a 17-hour shift last night. Nice. Now, Baycott is a problem. Is he, though? I don't know if he is. Let's keep on rolling, Nick. Yeah, we have the Sacramento Kings and the Memphis Grizzlies. We have the Kings as 10-point favorites, total of 225, uh, 222.5. Let's take a look at the line history in this spot here where it opened up with the Kings as – Nine and a half point favorites were up to a ten and a half, um, and a line opened up at a two twenty two and a half. It's down to a two twenty one and a half. So we've had to move towards the under. We've had to move towards the Kings in this game. Here we have seventy three percent of the tickets are on the Kings, but seventy five percent of the cash is on the Grizzlies in this spot here. And this is just a matchup of a team that is usually overvalued in the Sacramento Kings versus a team I can never get right in the Memphis Grizzlies. I would like to take a shot with Memphis in this game at plus 10 and a half. It would be going up against a little bit of a market move, uh, but not not enough to truly scare me off of a game. It's Grizzlies or nothing for me, but I just don't have the uh, the, the um, conviction to move on the Grizzlies because they've burnt me time and time again. I do think we're going to end up seeing a, a little bit of a run for um, – for the Kings, who are currently in the sixth seed, um, tied with both the Dallas Mavericks and the Phoenix Suns. So I do kind of see a little bit of a uptick from them. But um, am I laying 10 points on them? No. Memphis is the next team that's probably going to get eliminated from the playoff contention. So not really anything I want to go after there, especially on the road. This one's a, a stay away spot for me. Not 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 a, lot, not a lot that I like today. Kind of a lighter card for me. Me too. Like the, I think I might move on the next game, and then I'll just have probably Celtics in the next game, and that's about it. Well, we'll talk about the next game. Yeah. 
We have the New York Knicks and the Golden State Warriors. We have the uh, Warriors five and a half point favorites, total of 211 and a half in this game. Let's see if it correlates for me here to move on this game. Line opened up at a four. It's up to a four and a, uh, up to a five and a half. So we've had a move towards Golden State. Okay. Let's take a look at the uh, the uh, total here. Opened up at a 213. It's down to a 211 and a half. So we've had a move towards the under. And we've had a move towards the Warriors. 64% of the ticket. Oh, no. 63% of the tickets are on the Knicks. The lines move towards the Warriors, which I wanted to back the Knicks in this game. But I don't like the way the line's moving. Uh, 53% of the tickets are on the over in this spot. The line's dropped a little bit here, too. Um it's a tricky game, but I I, th- I, th- I think this line's too wide. And, and yeah, it'd be going up against a little bit of a line, line movement, but maybe this is one of those spots where how far is too far. And I think this line may have moved too far. Uh, for me, uh, I'm looking at the New York Knicks here. Um, seeing the best number available is 5.5 and, and a 185 on Caesars. I think I'm going to move on both of those there, plus 5.5, plus 185 with the New York Knicks in this game. Uh, it was a lean towards the Knicks for me, but I not not really anything I really wanted to get involved in. Um, I the Knicks have looked better as of late. I will say that. Um, they've won three straight games. Granted, Philly, Portland, Sacramento with a nice win for them. Um, Golden State coming off of a a a, bit, a nice win in LA against the Lakers. A little bit of rivalry there. Um, I looked maybe look at the total. Maybe look towards the over in the total. Um, just because I feel like you could see a little bit of a higher scoring game. By higher scoring, I mean one of the teams hitting 110 points, 112 points, uh, like 100, 112 to 103 type of game, uh, and, th- and that's high scoring for these two teams. Um, but I, nothing I really need to get involved in. I kind of wanted to keep it kind of short today, um, so not really any, any, anything I'm interested in. Fair enough. I'm moving on the Knicks at plus five and a half, minus one ten, and plus one eighty five. Both numbers available on Caesar Sportsbook right now. There you go. Memphis plus ten. Teams have played Knicks previous games are one and four against the spread in their next games. Huh. Interesting. Uh Supness from the Iron Jungle. Welcome. Also, Curry first three at plus two oh five. I can only look at Warriors. Knicks on a back to back. Memphis plus 10. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it applies to the Kings. Uh, Kings played the Knicks last, yes. Uh, Golden State. Knicks lose by double digits. Honestly, I could see that. Knicks 8 and 2 the under the last 10. So, Knicks have been go- There's been a lot of unders since the All Star break. I will mention that. I will say that. There's been a lot of unders. Let's head to the final game, Nick. Yeah, we have the. Uh... The L.A. Lakers and the Atlanta Hawks. The Lakers, eight-point uh, home favorites here in this game. Total of 226.5. This line opened up at, uh, at an eight and a half on DraftKings. It's moved up to a nine, so we've had a half-point line movement towards L.A. Line opened up 227. It's down to a 225. Um, we have 70% of the tickets and 97%. Oh, that's the money line. 68% of the tickets are on the Lakers spread and the lines move towards the Lakers. 79% of the tickets are on the under in this game as well. Um, my numbers have this line way wide, uh, way uh, closer, my bad, because uh, I have this game around a four. So I'm assuming there's some type of injury here for Atlanta that I'm missing. Um, but if there's not, uh, Atlanta plus eight, I think, has some value to it in this game. I'll pull it up real quick. Please, ESPN. There we go. Um, no. Hmm. Nothing really going on from the Hawk side. I want to move players on the Hawks. That, two players that mean nothing. So, I'm gonna I'm gonna move on the Hawks in this game. Then I'll take the points and I'll take the money line here in this spot. I'll shop around and try to find the best number. There you go. Good luck to you. But uh, that is uh, – sorry, um, I, I, I passed on this one. Uh, no real interest in going after it. I'm not laying eight points with the Lakers. Um, I don't trust the Hawks. Hawks have been the least profitable team to back on the spread this year. They are 23-44. and 44. 
Uh, yeah, I know eight points is a lot. I'm not interested in going after it. So it's going to end the card with just having Utah today. Hawks right. first half. Go, af go after it, LJ. Get it. That is all the games for today. Um, before we head on out and all that stuff, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you leave a like, comment, subscribe, share. Do all the good stuff. Appreciate all the support. Check out all the links in, in the description below. Uh, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. All of those are linked down below. Um, if you guys are interested in becoming a member of the channel, five ninety nine a month, sixteen cents a day. It's where you'll get the entire card. March Madness coming up, so lots of plays coming from that as well. So if you guys are interested in all that, that's over there. Uh, recap for today: I have more plays in hockey than I do in the NBA. Uh, Flames, puck line, and the Sabers, and then I like the Jazz. Nick. I'm on the Flames at minus 130, and I got the Celtics first half minus uh, – what was it? First half minus 8.5, full game minus 15. And then I got the Knicks plus 5.5, plus 1. Um, damn, what was that? What did I get on? Uh, plus 185, and then Hawks plus 9, plus 310 to end the night. There you go. Uh, that's going to do it for this edition of the Earl Sports Bet Show. We'll be back tomorrow. With another one. Peace out, guys.